Namaste, Tanava Pranam. By the instruction and grace of our spiritual master, Om Vishnu Pad Paramahamsa Sri Pad Bhakti Madhava Puri Maharaj, we are reading Srimad Bhagavatam. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Canto 2, Chapter 2, Text 36. Tasmat sarvatman harajan, aris harvatras harvada, shrotavyaha kirti tavyascha, smartavyo bhagavanunam. O king, it is therefore essential that every human being hear about, glorify, and remember the Supreme Lord, the personality of Godhead, always and everywhere. Srila Sukadeva Goswami begins this verse with the word tasma, or therefore, because in the previous verse he has already explained that there is no auspicious means for salvation other than the sublime process of bhakti yoga. The bhakti yoga process is practiced by the devotees in different methods like hearing, chanting, remembering, serving the lotus feet of the Lord, worshiping, praying, rendering service in love, becoming friendly and offering all that one may possess. All nine methods are bona fide methods and either all of them, some of them, or even one of them can bring about the desired result for the sincere devotee. But out of all the nine different methods, the first one, namely hearing, is the most important function in the process of bhakti yoga. Without hearing sufficiently and properly, no one can make any progress by any of the methods of practice. And for hearing only, all the Vedic literatures are there, compiled by authorized persons like Vyasadeva, who is the powerful incarnation of Godhead. And since it has been ascertained that the Lord is the super soul of everything, he should therefore be heard and glorified everywhere and always. That is the special duty of the human being. When the human being gives up the process of hearing about the all-pervading personality of Godhead, he becomes victim to hearing rubbish transmitted by man-made machines. Machinery is not bad because through the machine, one can take advantage of hearing about the Lord. But because machinery is used for ulterior purposes, it is creating rapid degradation in the uh, standard of human civilization. It is said here that it is incumbent upon the human being to hear, uh, to hear, because the scriptures like Bhagavad Gita and Srimad Bhagavatam are made for that purpose. Living beings, other than human beings, have no ability to hear such Vedic literatures. If human society gives itself to the process of hearing the Vedic literature, it will not become a victim to the impious sounds vibrated by impious men who degrade the standards of total society. Hearing is solidified by the process of chanting. One who has perfectly heard from the perfect source becomes convinced about the all-pervading personality of Godhead and thus becomes enthusiastic in glorifying the Lord. All the great acharyas like Ramanuja, Madhva, Chaitanya, Saraswati Thakur, or even in other countries, Muhammad, Christ, and others, have all extensively glorified the Lord by chanting always and in every place. Because the Lord is all pervading, it is essential to glorify him always and everywhere. In the process of glorifying the Lord, there should be no restriction of time and space. This is called Sanatan Dharma or Bhagavat Dharma. Sanatan means eternal, always and everywhere. Bhagavat means pertaining to Bhagavan, the Lord. The Lord is the master of all time and space, and therefore the Lord's holy name must be heard, glorified, and remembered everywhere in the world. That will bring about the desired peace and prosperity so eagerly awaited by the people of the world. The word sha includes all the remaining processes or methods of bhakti yoga as mentioned above. Text 37. Pibantiye Bhagavatatmanat Satam Katam Ratam Shravana Puteshu Sambratam Punanti Te Vishaya Vidhushitasyam 
Rajanti Tatcharana Saro Rantikam. Those who drink through oral reception, fully filled with the nectarian message of Lord Krishna. The beloved of the devotees purify the polluted aim of life known as material enjoyment and thus go back to Godhead to the lotus feet of him, the personality of God. Purport. The sufferings of human society are due to a polluted aim of life, namely lording it over the material resources. The more human society engages in the exploitation of undeveloped material resources for sense gratification, the more it will be entrapped by the illusory material energy of the Lord, and thus the distress of the world will be intensified instead of diminished. The human necessities of life are fully supplied by the Lord in the shape of food grains, milk, fruit, wood, stone, sugar, silk, jewels, cotton, salt, water, vegetables, etc. In sufficient quantity to feed and care for the human race of the world, as well as the living beings on each and every planet within the universe. The supply source is complete and only a little energy by the human being is required to get his necessities into the proper channel. There is no need of machines and tools or huge steel plants for artificially creating comforts of life. Life is never made comfortable by artificial needs, but by plain living and high thinking. The highest perfectional thinking for human society is suggested here by Shukadeva Goswami, namely sufficiently hearing Srimad Bhagavatam. For men in this age of Kali, when they have lost the perfect vision of life, the Srimad Bhagavatam is the torchlight by which to see the real path. Srila Jiva Goswami Prabhupada has commented on the Kathamrata mentioned in this verse and has indicated Srimad Bhagavatam to be the nectarian message of the personality of Godhead. By sufficient hearing of Srimad Bhagavatam, the polluted aim of life, namely lording it over matter, will subside and the people in general in all parts of the world will be able to live a peaceful life of knowledge and bliss. For a pure devotee of the Lord, any topics in relation with his name, fame, quality, entourage, etc. are all pleasing. And because such topics have been approved by great devotees like Narada, Hanuman, Nanda Maharaj, and other inhabitants of Vrindavan, certainly such messages are transcendental and pleasing to the heart and soul. And by the constant hearing of the messages of Bhagavad Gita and later of Srimad Bhagavatam, one is assured herein by Srila Shukadev Goswami that he will reach the personality of Godhead and render him transcendental loving service in the spiritual planet of the name Goloka Vrindavan, which resembles a huge lotus flower. Thus, by the process of bhakti yoga, directly accepted as suggested in this verse, by sufficient hearing of the transcendental message of the Lord, the material contamination is directly eliminated without one's attempting to contemplate the impersonal virat conception of the Lord. And by practicing bhakti yoga, if the performer is not purified from the material contamination, he must be a pseudo-devotee. For such an imposter, there is no remedy for being freed from material entanglement. Thus end the Bhaktivedanta purport of the second canto, second chapter of Srimad Bhagavatam, entitled The Lord in the Heart. And thus ends our reading for today. We'll continue from chapter three, pure devotional service, the change in heart, uh, hopefully on Friday. All glories to Om Vishnupad Paramahamsa Sripad Bhakti Madhava Puri Maharaj Ki Jai. Jai Srila Prabhupada, Srila Guru Maharaj, Srila Guru Dev, Srila Acharya Dev, Srila Shanta Maharaj Ki Jai. All glories to our Rupanuga Guru Varga Ki Jai. Our glories to the assembled devotees, Kijai, Bhakti Vrindam the Kijai, our glories to the worldwide devotees. Navadweep Dam Kijai, Mayapur Dam Kijai, Nishingapoli Dam Kijai, Jagannath Puri Dam Kijai, Baladev Subhadra, Jagannath Ju Kijai, 
Vrindavan Dam Ki Jai, Gir Govardhan Gupta Govardhan Dam Ki Jai, Sham Kund Radha Kund Ki Jai, Tosi Devi Bhakti Devi Vrinda Devi Ki Jai. Nitai Gora Pramanandi, Hari 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 Bo. Tanavak Pranams. Our glories to the Tirobhav Mahamahota, the disappearance day of uh, Sri Shamananda Prabhu and Sri Rishabdev, Sri Pad Rishabdev Prabhu. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna.